After all the hype and Don call, I had calmed down a little bit. And I went out and had a meeting with the guys and I said, this is it. We are not gonna disappoint this guy. Go to town, get it wrapped up. We had all the parts. All we had to do was put the heart into it. There wasn't a whole lot on the final assembly. Darren, in a bid for attention, ended up putting all the shaker pieces together on it. Royal worked on the seats, the back seat, front seat, putting the seat belts in, stuff like that. I was working on small trinkets and things around the car. Josh was doing some cleanup in the background. But together as a team, even though it was kind of a dysfunctional team. Boy, no matter how many times you tell Josh, that's how he's going to do it, his way. God, why? Putting the seat belts in the wrong place, it's not the end of the world, but it takes 15 minutes to switch back out the other way. We were able to get that car put together and done in time. So it was time for Don and Michael Baldwin to show up. I was pretty excited because, I mean, I never dreamed as a kid that I'd meet the director of the movie that was one of my favorites. So I was nervous. You guys see it in the, in the video. I could not wait to meet and talk. Don's a huge Mopar fan, huge Mopar fan. A. Michael Baldwin, he fell in love with Royal's Poop Box 67 Green Coronet. I have no idea what he loves about that car. Some people like Dung. Now, something I was completely jealous about A. Michael Baldwin when he told the story, he was only like 13 when they started filming that movie. He was riding through the cemetery doing woolies on that little Hodaka road toad. I wanted a road toad so bad. I didn't get one because dad was dead, right? Osgood Slaughter in the knee, tumor in the foot, right? Problems, colorblind, things happening. Rick Brown beat the tar out of me every day. I had a rough upbringing. I didn't get it, but I got it now. Michael Baldwin ain't got on me. <laughs> Hodaka. After the meet and greet and after all the smoke cleared, we were able to present the 1971 Cuda 344 speed Phantasm tribute to the director and lead actor. I'm gonna say it takes your breath it's away. It's beautiful. It's perfect. Wow. It's got the elastomeric bumpers. Uh -huh. The vinyl top real, really wow. looks sweet. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. The louver windows. Yeah. Got the wing. This thing's beautiful. It is just <laughs> awesome. Wow. It really is awesome. You know, I've revealed a lot of cars to a lot of people. Even owners don't flip out as much as Dawn did. I really like that uh, black bubble. I that, love the shaker. Yeah, but the black shaker is, is, is sweet. Oh, versus it's, like the Argent? Yeah, the yeah, Argent. It's, it's really, really sinister. All right, Don, I see several things about the car that are not at the tribute okay, I, level. I, I didn't want to bring that up. I think it was a yeah. Phantasm tribute car. We definitely changed some stuff, so I know the Phantasm hardcores out there who haven't seen this before are going to have fun. But I already know what the differences are. The vinyl top, the rear window louvers, the shaker. The Phantasm car didn't have that. One of the things the Phantasm car had that I couldn't bring myself to do was the flares on the quarter panels. That's a hard thing to undo. But Don had it done for the movie because back then, they were really popular. He also had Thornberry, the other lead actor's brother, do the gold leaf pinstriping. My client didn't want the pinstriping, I understand that. So yes, there were things on our car that weren't on the movie car, and there were things on the movie car that ours didn't have. So what, sue me. It's not exact. <laughs> yeah. It's not exact, yeah. no. We had Craigers, I think, right. on ours. Yes, you did. You know, once all the newness wore off and they see the car and it's beautiful, they, they just become like everybody else, right? They start to take little shots at the tray. The Spoiler. pinstripe. The pinstripe's important. Oh, this isn't right. That, I know those aren't right, right? What about your shoes? And what's yep. with the clown shoes? You back the tray in a corner, I'm going to come out swinging. That's how I do. This is like the Phantasm car on steroids. You know? Hey, the Phantasm car on steroids. I love what he said. It's the Phantasm car on steroids. Phantasm, man. Phantasm. If it doesn't scare you, you're already dead. <laughs> oh, yeah, the sunroof. Because we had to pop out of the sunroof and shoot at the hearse. It was a factory uh, sunroof? No, we just cut a hole in yeah. it and popped yeah. in an aftermarket. Oh, it wasn't your, a factory You can sunroof. believe that. This is so cool for me to learn about the car. I had no idea that the sunroof was an afterthought. You know, oh, Don Coscarelli coming at me all hard and stuff about, oh, it should have gold leaf, it should have the flares, and where's the Craigers? I got a question for you, Mr. Continuity. Why is it when the Cuda pulls up to the little cantina, El Cantina, there ain't no sunroof in that car? And then later, when he jump up through the roof, shoots at the hearse with the shotgun, magically there's a sunroof. Now, how does that work? I don't remember anything in the episode when the brother took the car down and had a sunroof put in it. Maybe it's a magic sunroof. Maybe he got his sunroof from the same place Jack got his beanstalk beans from. 
<laughs> That's my cousin Vinny. Well, you know what? Let me throw it back to Michael. Let's go. Let's let, let's show off your talents. Let's go. Can you, you drive? still drive this Love car? It. How cool is it that the lead actor, A. Michael Baldwin, who drove the 71 Cuda at 14 years old in the movie, don't tell anybody, came back to Graveyard Cars, what, 40 years later almost, and drove a 1971 quadruple black Cuda with a 340 and a four speed. What about the tray making some dreams come true? Dream maker. So why everybody say something about the dream maker and nobody want to say nothing about the dream maker? Okay, is that confusing to you? I got another one for you. What would happen if Jim Morrison drove his van over to Van Morrison's gym? Michael is 14 years old again. <laughs> yes. I love this car. What about that question? And just one more inconsistency from Mr. Perfect, Mr. Past Judgment, Don Coscarelli. How about the 446 barrel emblems on the hood of a Cuda that had a 340 in it? Y'all didn't know that. That car wasn't no 446 barrel. That car was a 340. So you know, what about truth? What about speaking truth to power? What about not being in a glass house and throwing a chrome sphere? <laughs> you play on the throw rocks. You thinking what I'm thinking? Let's go. <laughs> okay, let's go. What about Mark? He'll be all right. Yeah, who cares? <laughs> what I'll do is I'll end up just uh, going inside and seeing if I can send him a quick email. Or... I think a lot of fans are gonna love this part. Don Coscarelli has the CUDA from Phantasm 2, and he has it from Phantasm 3. He called me recently and said, we gotta get together and do something on these cars. So when they soon, hopefully next season, you are gonna see the Phantasm 2 CUDA, the Phantasm 3 CUDA, Don Coscarelli, and A. Michael Baldwin back in the hood.